good morning my YouTube viewers. It is uh, Tracy here, or Crystal here, and I'm here because I wanted to do a code review for you, and I wanted to do the code review on the NLTK uh, notebook. And I decided to do it in Kaggle because I wanted to use the Disaster Tweets data set. And um, so I did it a little bit differently. I uh, made predictions on the validation set, but I didn't make any predictions on the uh, test set. And the reason why is because I'm still learning in LTK. And I will say that I find in LTK a lot harder to work with than SK Learn. But I just wanted to use NLTK just to, as an illustration, to show you all the things that you can do with NLTK. Because I had heard of NLTK, but I didn't have that much experience with it. I just used it a little bit in my machine learning. But one thing that I found out was that, um, you can you can use it for you can even make predictions with NLTK, which is something that I didn't know, and so that's why I decided to go ahead and use NLTK to make predictions on it, just to show you what I can do. So I used Kaggle's Disaster Tweets data set, and the problem statement is. You're challenged to build a machine learning model that predicts tweets are about real disasters and which ones aren't. You'll have access to a data set of 10,000 tweets that were hand classified. Is it, if this is your first time working on an NLP problem, we've created a quick tutorial to get you up and running. So I haven't taken the tutorial. Maybe I should go back and take the tutorial. So the first thing I did was I wanted to import some libraries, which were NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. NumPy helps you to create nu numerical NumPy arrays and do numerical processing. Pandas creates data frames and maintains them. Matplotlib plots your <laughs> data points onto a graph and Seaborn is a more sophisticated library than Matplotlib and it does um, statistical graphing. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to load the files that were actually in the operating system that you can use for this. So the files that were already in the operating system were train test and sample submission. Then what we wanted to do is we wanted to use Pantas to read the files. So we read the files in and we had train test and submission. So here's your train file where it has ID, keyword, location, text, and target. So there's obviously something wrong with keyword and location because it's all not a numbers. So I just wonder if their um, data set has been corrupted in some way. And then with your test file, you have the same information in the test file, except that you don't have a target. And the submission file is what Kaggle wants to see when you submit your data. But we're not going to be submitting anything to Kaggle because I'm not good enough with L in LTK. I did do a prediction, but I did a prediction on the validation set, not the test set. And maybe when I get better at NLTK, I'll come back and then do predictions and submit my predictions to um, Kaggle and do an end-to-end in -end, end -end NLTK because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do end-to-end -end NLTK and just use NLTK. So what we do is we analyze the target. You can see the target, you've got more zeros than you have ones. And we use Seaborn for that. Here's the code. We did a disk plot. So we did Seaborn for that. And then I made a little box plot as well. But the box plot is just zeros and ones. And you had more zeros than you had ones. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define 
the target, which is target, interestingly enough. And now we're going to set the data frame up for NLTK. And this is, I will say that I'm not very happy with the, um, the documentation on NLTK. I thought it was, for me, it was more difficult to read. I don't know if if any of my viewers want to look at the NLTK documentation, they might find it easier to read. But for me, it was very difficult to read. But what I gather is if you want to make a prediction on a corpus, then what you have to do is uh, you have to make sure that your data set has only two columns. It has a column for text and a column for um, the tag. And that's one thing that I sort of like figured out while I was working on this because I've been working on it for a few days and I haven't been able to create a lot of content because I've been stuck on this. So what you have to do is within LTK, they have their own data, they have their own corpuses in the program or in the website and you can use the corpuses and make predictions on the corpuses but I prefer to use a data set um, and then what you have to do is you have to get the data set set up so you can actually use it because if you don't set the data set up so you can use it then it's not going to work and that's one thing that I found out while I was practicing on NLTK so what we had to do is on the train file we had to drop the ID keyword and location and we had to keep the feet we had to keep the text and the target so your feature is your text and your label is your target and that's what I've sort of figured out that a data frame can only have two columns, one column for text and one column for the target. Now we're going to import some more libraries into NLTK that we're going to need to work on NLTK. So we're going to import random, which produces random numbers. Import re, which is dealing with strings. We're going to import NLTK, that's natural language toolkit. And then sync from natural language toolkit tokenize, import word tokenize from natural language toolkit classify, import lay base classifier as NBC. We're going to download the punt from NLTK corpus. We're going to import stop words. We're going to download stop words and we're going to download the average perceptron tagger. Okay, now we're going to do our NLTK processing. So we set up our variable stop words. We set up documents. We set up all words. Documents and all words are blank list. Our allowed word types are going to be J because we're going to be looking for sentiment. And so now we have a for loop that I've set up. So if P in range, then chain. If label P equals one, documents append feature P, pause. If label P equals zero, document dot append feature neg. Feature P equals feature P lower. You set that to lowercase. Clean equals R E sub R carrot a to z s and then use the feature p for that so we're going to clean the document clean the text documents equals nlt dot word tokenize cleaned word length if what that t is telling you if the word is less less than three or less than or equal to three or greater than or equal to seven, less than or equal to seven. Well, if the word is greater than three and less than seven, then you can keep the word. Because I think what they're trying to say is it's not going to have a whole lot of meaning if it's over seven letters. And then stop, that's you checking for your stop words. And then all equals NLTK 
pos tag stop. So you're going to do, um, you're going to tag it. You're going to tag it with part of statement, part of statement tagging or part of sentence tagging. And that's going to be all. For W in all, if W10 in all in allowed words types, all words dot append W0. So that means that if it's an adjective, then it will put it in the list. And so it doesn't look like it did that much to me. I don't I'm not sure. It says if it's in allowed word types. I'm not sure it did, it's supposed to be like an adjective, and that's forgive, forest, that's a noun. Send is a verb, update, do, county is a noun, heavy, afraid, ha, wait is a verb, second, Florida. So it looks to me like it didn't do, it didn't set them up for verbs, but what I think is happened is because normally we would be using the um, corpus, so the part of speech tag, it would tell you what it was. But the part of speech tag didn't work in this instance. So, so yeah, the part of speech tag, in my opinion, it didn't work. So we didn't have a part of speech tag here. Okay, and then so we have all words equals, we're going to check the frequency distribution of all words, and um, so you can see how many times each word appears. And then we check our features is a list of all the words. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a um, function to select the features because it says define features, words equals words tokenize. So you're going to tokenize the document. And then features is a dictionary, an empty dictionary for W in word features. Features W equals W in words. And you're going to return the features. So now we're going to extract the features, and this was really hard for me to get. I mean, I had to work on this bit a lot to get this to work. So feature sets equals find features, feature label for index, feature label in train it iter rows, random shuffle feature sets, and then so you're going to shuffle it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split the... Um, data set up into train set and test sets and we're going to use the train set to do that and we're going to have 80% is the train set and 20% is the test set and so we've got here this is just a little bit of just one part of the train set and it says they're all false it's going to be mostly false because what they want to do is they want to see if the word is actually in the text 
so it's going to be mostly false, but you should have some trues in there somewhere, although I'm not really seeing any trues, but there should be some trues in there. And that's just telling you if it's in the document. But we should have, I'm just seeing all falses, but there should be trues in there if you look. Okay, so we've got all falses. So now we go through the NLT classifier. So classifier equals NBC dot train train set. Print classifier accuracy. NLT classify accuracy. Classifier test set times 100. And it, it says you show the most informative features. So I gave you a classifier accuracy of 67.76%. And it gives you 50 words of the most frequently used words. So you've got suicide is a true, which is a positive. Suspect is a positive. Atomic is a positive. Crush is negative. Harm is negative. Heavy is positive. Fatal is positive. Bloody is negative. Bigger is positive. Flash is positive. Train is positive. Wrecked is negative, wrong is negative, alarm is positive, and seen is positive. So you can see right here that it didn't really do a very good job of deciding whether they're positive or negative. Uh, because suicide, in my opinion, would be negative. And suspect, in my opinion, would be negative. So that's just something to think about. About, but this is just the data set that we had in um, the data set that we had in tag call, and I think it wasn't tagged because if you come here, we'll look right here because it says allowed word types is J, so and it said um, allowed word types is J. So it didn't have that part of speech tag. And um, so because it didn't have that, well, it, it, it did have the part of speech tag because I did actually go through and check like what was W10 and W10 was Jackie. So it did have a part of speech tag. But for some reason, it didn't work well. And I think that's a, the business with the corpus. Because it, the corpus, if you have a corpus, then you actually have a part of speech tag. But since I was just using a blank data set, then um, I guess it didn't tag it. And we didn't have a high, very, ac very high accuracy. And it selected some words as being positive that I would have considered them negative. So this was just an exercise in how to use NLTK. So if you want to use NLTK. And I did another one in Google Code Lab, And it wasn't as fancy as this one. But it gave me a higher accuracy. It gave me an accuracy of 87.23%. So, um, and again, everything was true. So, it's just something to think about. This is just something to think about using NLTK, the Natural Language Toolkit, to make predictions. And so, we did that. We made a prediction. And um, in my opinion, it didn't turn out as good as it could have. But that's why you experiment with things. So if you want to experiment with NLTK, then you've got the code and you can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, video because I've gone through the NLTK. And um, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. And I want to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to my channel and supporting me. And thank you again for watching this video. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.